Welcome to a webinar on working with clients remotely, featuring Betsy Davison and Michael Shea, hosted by ASMP Chair Marianne Lee. Take it away, Marianne. Thank you, Doug. I really appreciate the intro there. And um, we're very excited to have a webinar today on working remotely with Michael Shea, who is one of our uh, board members. He's my vice chair. He's out in Portland, Oregon at Polaris Studios, and he has been working remotely these past couple of weeks. We're also joined by a very special guest, Betsy Davison with Space for the Arts, and they uh, manage rental studios around the world. So it's pretty exciting to have these two um, speakers here, and I'm gonna turn it right over to them uh, with one caveat. Um, we'll be talking a lot of things about, um, there were a lot of questions that came in before about safety and health. Before you do any shoot, you should absolutely check your local health guidelines and check on the CDC as well. So go ahead, Michael. Well, I wanna welcome you to um, Polaris Studio. This is, um, there's more Polaris Studio than this little room. This is my little natural light room on the second floor. It used to be my uh, partner's office until I kicked them out and I realized it had beautiful north light windows. So that's what we're going to be uh, working at with today is natural light. Uh, you can also do this with studio light. There's a, you have to make sure you have a little more light in the studio than just the modeling lights or strobes or set your color balance to tungsten so you get a pretty good view. But it, it works fine also in natural light. Um, I'll be working with a couple of different softwares but, but the main software I'm working with uh, is called Zoom. And Zoom is a meeting software that lets you share your screen with your clients. There are other ones out there like BlueJeans, even GoToMeeting, anything like that will work if you, can share this, um, if you can share your screen. So to show you what we're doing, I'm going to set up really quickly. Oh, and, and Betsy is going to act as my art director at this sample shoot, I should explain. So we're going to be doing a sample little wine shoot and I'll give you an idea, that'll give you an idea of how I work with art directors and some of the different techniques I use. And then at the end, I'll show you how you would do it if you were in Lightroom as opposed to Capture One. But really, it's not the software you use to capture the files, though I think Capture One has an advantage or two. Um, it's the way you share the screen in the meeting software that makes this remote working possible. Um, so I'm going to share the screen. And what you're looking at now, I'm looking at, are you seeing my Capture One software or are you seeing? We're seeing the bottle. Good, perfect. So um, this is just, it's a little uh, wine client that we've worked with for a number of years, Ponzi Vineyard. They're one of the original founders of, um, of uh, the Oregon wine industry here in the 1970s. Um, it's one of their Pinot Gris, so we're working with a white wine. So Betsy, um, you saw this first shot. Let me do another one for you real quick. And let's just throw a glass in there. And before we do any props, I wonder what you think of the background. Do I have other options? You have Every, I have, I only have about a hundred backgrounds here at the studio. So I have lots Excellent. of them. <laughs> so I thought maybe something light and airy. I don't know. Do you want to go with something a little earthier, a little richer? Mm. Um, how about the outdoors look? Do we have anything that could look like we are outside? That's a little tougher. You've got to think you're in the winery. Uh, I mean, um, how about a richer color behind, more a richer color behind it? Yeah, hold on a second. If you want something a little more natural looking, let me show you a couple options, okay? What we're gonna do, and this will be really easy for you, is we're gonna go to live video, and I'm gonna throw up some other options for you to look at. Now, you can't use live video for exposure or anything like that, but what you can use it for is it'll give you an idea of um, what the background might look like, okay? So, actually, Betsy, I'm gonna turn my screen a little bit so I can see what I'm doing while I'm working with the live video.
So here's kind of a more organic look, which is kind of cool. And we can yep. also use this as a surface if need be, right? Yep. No, I, and, and remember, it's probably going to be lighter in the real shot. Yeah. So um, that's one option. Okay. Another option, which is kind of which is kind of cool and kind of modern looking, though. It takes you more in the loft rather than the. That's kind of neat. Something mm. a little more warm, right? Okay. Or. You can go totally rich and dark like that. Mm. No, nope, I don't I like change the foreground out too. But what are you thinking? Give me your feelings. About uh, I like the first option. I liked the natural wood. Um, I thought that gave it a, a really rich feel, um, warm tones. And I'd like to see another glass, if I might. Sure. Let's, let me get the natural wood up there, and then let's talk about surfaces, OK? All right. It takes a minute to grip this stuff up, so you have to be patient with me. I love the, the live video feature. Isn't that neat? It's very cool that I can be talking to you, and I know you're scooting around the studio. Yeah, you can kind of, you can kind of sort of see me starting to grip things up a bit. <laughs> it looks pretty heavy. <laughs> At my age, everything is heavy. You didn't know you'd have to be hauling around firewood today. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I always say my art directors always pick the heaviest background. So I am, so the one thing. Light little ones, you know? Yeah, the one thing I'm noticing, Michael, um, on this live video feature is that when you're talking behind the wood, it's not exactly, all the words are not quite clear. So if you could help understand what you're saying. And as all art directors, I'm having my cup of tea. So we can't see what you're up to as you're off screen right now, Michael. Can you talk to us about what you're doing? I'm right next to the background. Bear with me a second. I just want to grip this up. And make sure it doesn't move. We've got a sandbag and I'll be good to go. I like um, the surface also because some of the lines in the wood are following the curves of the bottle. Cool. There's a lot of movement for me right now, which I like. That's, yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. So let's talk about the foreground now. Let's talk about the foreground now that I'm closer and you can hear me. I was joking that, you know, art directors always pick the heaviest background in the studio. <laughs> they never pick a light paper or something like that. But um, what do you think for a foreground? The marble seems a little cold to me, you know? I was just going to say that now that you've taken that white brick uh, and now we have this rich sort of movement. Um, so what I'm going to do is protect it. It's the quickest way to switch a background. Now, one thing we can do, I have to clean it a little bit, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, up. there we are. That's looking nice. Or Another nope. option throw something like that. Nope, it's too heavy. Too heavy? Nope. 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 
So way too much. Okay. You lost all the you lost all the the warmth and, and movement. Uh-huh. Got too much the same color. Yep. I'm actually loving what you put down first. Okay. Let's just go back there. First Save off, time. The the first I liked the first surface because it is picking up some of the color of the knot in the wood. Uh -huh. Bear with me. Then we'll take a shot and we'll see what we think when we see it at the correct exposure, okay? Okie doke. Betsy, while Michael's rearranging that, there is a question in the question box about what the fav what the go to tea is for art directors: green tea or English breakfast? <laughs> I, well, uh, green tea in the morning, and this afternoon it's um, it's uh, Scottish breakfast tea because ah. I need I need that extra caffeine kick. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll let, well, what let I'm going to do is background Betsy from you can close it. Left or right in frame with the bottle, Betsy? Left. Like you're, it's good. I like there. Okay, good. I like it too. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at what this thing looks like in a real shot, okay? Because the tones are always a little off in video. Cool, right? Yep. So maybe a little bright because I was compensating for the white before. Let's darken it a little bit. That exposure looks a little better, doesn't it? Yep. Yep. Shall I go a bit darker a little more? Let's see what that looks like. That's a little better. Okay. So now, what do you think of the background, the background of the backwood? Would you like it a little lighter, a little darker? Do you like it where it is? Can I have it a little lighter, please? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go back to live video so I can place this properly. Cool. All I'm doing here is simply moving the background so it catches the light a little more, you know? Of course, it takes a little bit um, It's a little bit too centered underneath the knot in the wood. It doesn't look good. Better? Mm. No, take it back, Michael. Take it back. I liked I liked it the way it was. More like that. No. The problem is we have the background gets narrower when I angle it to the right. So we have to compromise a little bit. Okay. I agree that the knot shouldn't be right above the bottle. How about that? How's that for a compromise? That's fine. Cool. Okay, let's go off live video and we'll see if I did what I needed to do. Like I say, you can't trust the lighting on live video, but you can, it works great to pick backgrounds and things. Nice. 
And then here comes a new shop crew. There you go. I haven't lit it yet, but that'll be a good start, right? Yeah, I can see the bricks in your shot, but. I know. We'll crop them out or something like that. I'll form them out. The other thing we could do is take that whole background dark and just make the live work. More okay. Of a, you know, see if that'll work. Much I can see it. Well, I do. I I I want to make sure that we have enough time at the end of this for questions and answers. Sure. Um, so okay. we should probably, for the sake of time, keep moving along here. Okay. Well, I'm going to throw four glasses in. You pick a glass. Okay. I am loving the um, the surface that the bottle is on. It just brings out the richness behind the bottles. So, loving it. So then we're gonna go back to live video. And I'm just gonna swap the glasses in now real quick, okay? There's kind of your standard wine glass, right? Pretty simple. There's something with a little more panache. A little tall maybe for the bottle, I don't know. Another kind of plastic high-end glass, right? And then we have the stem. What are you liking? I don't like that one. The last one I don't like. Um, number two was too tall for the bottle. So it's number one or number three. I think it's that one. Okay. So then the next question is in back of the bottle, in front of the bottle. What do you think? No, it's not in front. Speaking away from the lines from behind in the wood following the bottle. Maybe like that. You like that arrangement? That's actually quite nice. I want to make sure that the line behind it isn't coming directly out of the glass. Yeah. Um, in I'll, the wood. I'll move everything over a little bit to make that happen. Yeah, okay. But that's quite nice. There. Like that, right? Just like that. That's quite nice. I want to see what that does. Michael, I know you were going to do a, uh, a Lightroom demo as well before you move to that. We have a few people, I think, that came on a little after we started, and it might be helpful just to, you know, before you move on, go through the tech that you're using right now. Okay. Um, for those people who joined this late, uh, we're basically using um, Zoom, which is a meeting software. It's not the only one available. There are other things available, like Blue Jeans and stuff like that, but some companies about the security features in Zoom. Uh, but we're basically using Zoom and we're sharing our screen and the, the software we're using to capture the file is my preferred capture software, which is Capture One. Um, the reason I like Capture One, and Lightroom does a great job in a lot of different ways, but the reason I like Capture One is this live video feature is, is kind of the killer app in Capture One, particularly when you're working remotely and when you're working with our directory, because then you can kind of say, Oh, yeah. And you just arrange everything a little better. See that? And I can work on it. And then the art director, when I share my screen, can, can, can see things live and can actually pick backgrounds live. So it really makes this whole process a lot quicker. See that? And then I'm just shooting here. Because, of course, in video, you're not going to get the kind of tonality and color and everything that's going on, right? Now I'm going to do one other thing, especially just because it bothers me as a photographer. And you can take this. I'm going to do it. So, Michael, as as the art director for the shoot, I'm having a hard time hearing you because you're talking as you're moving around. Um, so, well, we'll get, I'll get back in front of the screen, and that's a okay. really good point to keep in mind. Now, so what I did is I put a dark piece of wood back there so it didn't distract us, Betsy. Great. And then it shows a nice live edge of the other piece of wood. That's kind of cool. Okay. 
Okay, now, next thing is very simple. You get to choose. You go back to live video. And I don't think we're going to take this to a conclusion and actually um, um, show every single process and pour the line and do all that. But what I think this will do is give you a good idea, okay, of how do we want to prop this stuff? So let me show you what I had, okay? Michael, while you're digging those out, there's one more tech question in the box. Um, they're wondering how you are tethering to um, how you are tethering to your computer. Are you using a cable or are you going wireless? Um, I'm not going wireless. I am using uh, um, just a long 15 foot tether tool stable, kind of ubiquitous stable that everybody has around, and a regular USB 3 and tethering it right into the USB 3 port on my laptop. Excellent. Um, and I see a question about how to do that with Lightroom as well. You can use a Tether Tools cable in that, um, in that app as well. Book, whether you're in Lightroom or Capture, it's the exact same yeah. book. Or you can also use um, Camera Control Pro if you're an icon, and Canon makes the software as well. You can use all those tethering softwares to do this, right? But as I mentioned, the cool thing about this is we have live video, so it makes the art direction end of it a lot easier for me because I can say, you know, do you like oranges? Do you like tulips? No. Do you want something maybe a little more spring like? Like that? No. Or You want something really low key. What are you thinking, Betsy? Any direction on that? Um. Uh, what, it, I'm sorry. What is the wine that you uh, we're shooting today? I'm sorry. I should know this, but the green is, so it's a Pinot Gris. It'll be a dry white, made in European style with the notes of citrus. So I'd like to pick a prop that brings uh, that brings some connection to the flavors in the wine. Okay. Um, whatever that branch is does not do it for me. Um, so if I'm trying to make people think about the flavor in the wine itself and what it would taste like, I think the closest to that, you know, a lot of times um, um, there's a fruity or fruity flavor or. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so guys, I'm wondering if we can move on to the Lightroom thing, and then we've got quite a few tech questions coming in. So yeah. I think it so might well. be time to sort of head in that direction. Perfect. Um, Michael, can you hear me okay? I Michael? can hear you just great. Thank you. All right. So there's quite a bit, there's quite a bit of discussion in the Q and A about our audiences having a hard time hearing you as you're moving around. So the question is, have you considered using a mic? Um, when you're working with your clients so that they can hear you better as well. That's a really good idea. The other way I've done this in the past is um, in, our, in our true daylight setup, our computer that I tether from is actually on a balcony outside the daylight room um, so that we can judge what's on the computer screen in a darker environment, right? And then what I've done is I've called in on my cell phone to the Zoom software and I can talk on my cell phone to the um, and that can work really effectively too. Um, so yeah, that's what I've done. But you could use a mic. You could go right into one of the imports on your computer and use a mic. Use like a little lavalier or something like that. But you can also call into the meeting software on your cell phone and just talk to your cell phone. And that'll work. But you have to mute your computer when you do that and you get weird kind of feedback. Okay. So, so let's, let's take a look and see what Lightroom looks like. Okay. Let me just get this one shot. Because, you know, it's a pause, so I don't have to finish where I started. And then I'll show you what I can do in my room. So there's the shot in capture, right? Maybe we can move this so it's possible. Something like that. 
but we can move in the light. We can move in the light room right now. Perfect. And as I recall, Lightroom does not have the live video feed, it correct? Does not, no, unfortunately. So all I'm going to do is slide my Lightroom file over there on top. Now, I'm not going to change all the settings from the last time I shot this. But there you go in Lightroom, right? Michael, I have a sneaking suspicion people would really appreciate it if you would go through those menus just a little slower. Uh -huh. Just pause so they can see where those things are located. Sure. So what I'm doing, let me go over it again. I opened Lightroom. And obviously you have to create your own catalog. You have to do all these kind of things. But pretty simply in here, in Lightroom, there is a tethered capture. Can you all see that? There is a tethered capture menu. I just tell it to start tethered capture. This is where you fill out your job number, your metadata where the file is going to be, if you're going to include any copyright, stuff like that. But you can see how we fill it out. That gives you an idea. We have keywords and copyright, and we specify the location and how the cup capture is named. And uh, like in this, the custom text happens to be the job number, you know. Um, but that's how we fill out our stuff in Lightroom. Then it's detecting the camera. And once you have this stuff, where you have the exposure, the name of the camera, and everything. There it is, in Lightroom. Now, the other thing you can do, of course, in Lightroom is it gets rid of all the tools, right? And is it F? That makes it black screen. So that makes the, what that can do for your client is they don't have to look at all the crap around Lightroom. They can look at that big on the screen, right? And Lightroom works great. It's a beautiful software to shoot with. It just doesn't have the live capture, uh, the live video that captures one. So if you want to move things in the Lightroom environment, you can still hear me. If we're moving things in the Lightroom environment, Hey, hey, Michael, just a, just a point of reference, wherever you are standing and talking right now is a really bad spot for your client to hear you. <laughs> just for future reference. I was eight feet behind the set. Now, there you are. So now you can see me. So what I did is in Lightroom, what you have to do is to show the client a change, you have to take a shot. Right? But it works, right? It works just as effectively as Capture One. It just has a slightly different process to Capture One. So, so I think you guys can see, and I think if I hit F again, it'll go away. That's great, Michael. I'm gonna, um, we have, are, are you guys ready for questions? Yeah, I mean, we can unshare the screen now. We get into the Zoom app here. There, we unshare. There we go. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you, uh, Michael. I appreciate that. Lovely shot. Betsy, how was your experience on the other end? Like, how did you feel the communication went back and forth? I, I think, um, I, I mean, I know I mentioned it. I wasn't trying to do it too many times. But the, the, as Michael walked around his studio, it became difficult to hear when he was putting up, you know, the backdrop or walking away from the microphone. So 
having a mic would be really helpful um, because it sounded like he was mumbling and I know he's not. It's just that the sound quality, it, um, it just needs to be crisper because obviously everybody is, you know, working on tight timelines and, you know, want to get the shot as quick as possible. So, yeah. Uh, my but otherwise, is, it was lovely. I loved the video feature. It's amazing to be, you know, to have that back and forth. Um, obviously, the the interaction is really helpful. And typically, what will happen is for us as a client, you know, I'll stay on camera and I'll have stylists moving things around for me or assistants moving things. Of course, around, of course. So I'm interacting yeah. more directly with the client. Of course. Or yeah. my assistant will be right on the computer listening to the client and relaying to me. So there, there are ways around that pretty easily. So we've got a bunch of questions in the chat and coming in from a few other places. Uh, Michael Jones would like to know how are you were dealing with receiving and returning product. Ah. Um, and he says for clients or studios in an interstate situation where they are located in different states, what restrictions on alcohol shipments are you having to watch for? Ah. Um, the way we're dealing with, um, and say hi to Michael for me, he's a local Portland photographer that I know, um, amazing photographer actually. Um, I think for the way we're receiving and getting other shipments of products is we do a front door drop off. And then, you know, we try to wipe down the products or the people wipe them down before they deliver. So it's front door drop off, front, front door pickup. And, um, and then always, we're all wearing these, you know, when we're talking to people and stuff like that to be safe. And um, scrounging Clorox wipes and antiseptic wipes at every odd retailer you can around to keep things wiped down. Um, alcohol restrictions. Um, we have, we've had a couple of shipments of alcohol that have come in and haven't had that problem. I think Oregon allows alcohol income. It's shipping out to other states. That's a big thing. So. Um, so Henrik de Goyer, sorry, Henrik, I butchered your last name, wants to know, have you used the screencasting software like Zoom on location, far from any studio, using a Wi-Fi hotspot like a, spot, like a mobile phone with any success since you are not sending any large raw files instead of seeing the live process and any sh photo shoot iterations requested by the remote art director. Okay. The beauty is that Zoom does work effectively on mobile phones. You're not sending live large files to the client. So you're looking at screens. Um, so I, we have lots of clients who have signed in on Zoom on their phone or on their iPhone. So I, I wouldn't anticipate there's, ever, there's a problem doing it on location as long as you have a good strong cell phone system. You know, if you're in one or two bar land, eh, that may be a little tricky. Now, I did want to mention there is another, maybe this is a good point to mention. There's other wireless tethering solutions that are out there. Chase makes one, um, Cam Ranger makes two or three of them, and all those solutions wind up sending low res JPEGs. You split the files you make from RAWs into low res JPEGs. And it'll send low res JPEGs either to a web server or to a um, uh, or to a, an iPad. So if, if you want your client to be in a separate area of the studio to keep social distancing that way, they could be judging from 20 feet away. Um, those essentially all those things are versions of battery operated wireless routers. So they create a local Wi-Fi network that allows these low res files to be transferred to any device, whether it's a computer or mobile device or whatever. Thank you. So there's another sort of tech question here from Daniel Quat, Quait, sorry, Daniel. Um, he says, so am I to assume if you wanted to show client options, you shoot it this way and that and compare it for the client? Yes. Um, so so what you can do to give you an idea is you could literally just in, in Capture or in, in uh, Lightroom, just pick two images at the same time, put them up on your screen and your client can see them side by side. We do that all the time. Um, all right, Mary Rafferty would like to know, she says, 
You mentioned the color shift in the video feature with Capture One. Have you found there is a color difference when you are showing images on Zoom or other conferencing software? Honestly, the biggest color difference is how many of your clients have color correct monitors? That's, that's the thing I worry about more than anything else. And you know, you have, you, you, I can't tell you the amount of times that we have to have the discussion. So are you looking at this on your iPhone? or on your laptop, you know, trust me, the contrast is fine. Trust me, there's detail in the highlights. That, that, but that has more to do, less with the software. We found Zoom software is pretty good, you know, because remember we're casting at least from a color corrected monitor. So all our monitors are profiled. But whether it is on the other end, we have no control. Um, so we've got one more question here and I'll move on to a couple other maybe non techy things. One is, what do you recommend to best hear the art director? Would you want your computer connected to a speaker system? So I guess that's talking about sound going the other way, you know, you being able to hear the art director. I'd like somebody posted right at the computer telling me what they're saying, because a lot of times I'm on the camera. So a human relay is the best. Speaker system works great. The other thing that I, I really would recommend too is uh, calling in. Remember, you can, you can call into the Zoom software as both a mobile phone, telephone only, no image, and as a computer or an iPad with a camera. So if you call in on your phone and you mute your computer, you can literally have your phone to your ear or your phone on speaker right really close to you so you can hear somebody really clearly. Thanks. I keep muting and unmuting myself because I have a child playing in the background, as I'm sure most of us do these days. <laughs> um, so I wanted to get to a couple of these other, um, these other questions we get in. How are you marketing to your clients that you can shoot remotely? Uh, we are telling our clients um, that we care about what's going on and we're trying to follow as many safe protocols as we can. And um, we're just, we're sending out emails and we're doing um, featured stories on our website and we're, and we're sending out um, um, uh, regular personal emails. You know, we got a, we sent out a personal email to every client we work with that, you know, we're working with minimal crews, you know, and people are just, and we're, and, we're and we're recommending they work remotely. The big thing I found that makes this effective as a tool is you're gonna have to spend the time and give the client a little demo about how easy this process is. And once they see it, their fear will be gone. Because it's, Betsy, what do you think? I mean. No, I, um, I would say, let's all remember the entire world is in the same boat. No one, everyone is home. We, we all are at ground zero. We're all working in our home office and we're all desperately trying to figure out how to do our work. And I would be very surprised if the clients don't already know that Zoom exists. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure Zoom is ubiquitous now. Um, I would say empathy, be creative, Business needs to be personal. If it's not personal, what else is it? And try to engage as best you can because person to person, it's gonna take a while for us to get back to. Um, so, so those are the most important things to remember. But as Michael was saying, and I'm sorry, I'm probably talking to some, a few other questions, but safety on set, we're all gonna be talking about that. And to Michael's point, fewer, fewer crew you know, remote technology, safety on set includes cleanliness, you know, wiping down the equipment or fogging the space, you know, shooting in a cornfield in Iowa is going to be safer than shooting in a really tiny studio. Um, maybe it's shorter shoots over three days so that the viral load or exposure gets spread out. Um, wearing a face mask, wearing gloves, um, situational awareness, maybe on set, You've got your um, assistant just watching the set and making sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing and be safe, being safe about it. And the list goes on, um, but I think 
marketing today is easier than it ever has been because we're all going to be opening up those gates at the same time. And you're not really, I mean, literally, if you're know the tech, you can't have a tech hiccup and be empathetic and then just go for it, making sure that you're safe. Yeah. So there's two more, two more little sort of process questions that I think are important to address. One is from Lauren Mazada. She says, have you adjusted pre-production processes at all now for that client that can only join the shoot virtually? For example, having them approve certain props visually since they may not be shipping their own with the products. Yes, we totally have adjusted. One of the big things is honestly, many of my stylists are very reluctant to shop. They're reluctant to go into the stores. So it means we're trying to ask for a little more lead time so we can get by things remotely and get them delivered to the studio. And then we use the Zoom process, you know, with little test shoots or little videos to show them what the props are look like and they can make a call, you know. And honestly, I found a lot of the clients are really flexible and caring and say, okay, that may not be the perfect, we may not find the perfect fork, but I know you guys have forks. Let's see what we can work with with what you got. Because these are extraordinary times. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and we've got a question that's come in from Facebook. We are streaming Facebook Live. And this is from Jake on Facebook. He says, are you using Capture Pilot to share actual captures with art directors? as opposed to just going off the live feed? Um, we have used Capture Pilot in, this, in the past, and it does work very effectively. There's a, there's a web-based part of Capture Pilot you can use. Well, the problem with Capture Pilot is um, it does not allow a live video, so you're shooting stills. It doesn't allow you to put the layout on the image when you're shooting it. And then, and then finally, you can't talk to your art director. You know, the sh screen share in Zoom or Blue Jeans or whatever software you want to use is more effective. Also, you can see if your art director is paying attention. <laughs> the plus side of this over everything else is that um, on this kind of software, if they have to be in front of their computers, you do have their immediate attention. And it actually is way faster than sending approval JPEGs or anything like that. That's excellent. Thanks. Um, and there's just one more in there. Well, I'll probably keep saying it. I'm just like a photographer, right? Just one more shot. And could uh, I, Marianne, before you get that far, I just wanted to mention that um, budgets might begin to change. Um, you know, the budgets on set, you know, you might all of a sudden you're not traveling. So that kind of fell off and maybe there's not as much crew, but there's going to be increased costs for the extra safety on set or um, how you have to manage that itself. So just be, when you're, when you're pitching, just make sure um, that you balance how procedures have changed and what those, what those budgets look like. So this question is from Christina Peters and I, I'll read it and then I'll kind of paraphrase it for you, Michael. Um, she says, Michael, have you been doing any food photography jobs? And if so, are you still working with a food stylist and prop stylist? I would imagine that makes it very hard on set to stay six feet away. Um, are you having a hard time getting good looking food to photograph? We're still not able to get a ton of food here in my area. So I know, I know you've been shooting with one or two people in the studio, but you, you guys stay apart from each other. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, we I have a crew right now cooking for a shoot tomorrow in, in the kitchen and they're wearing masks and we're staying apart. And yeah, we're trying to do the best we can about that. I mean, what we try to do, some of our procedures we do, for example, are when I work with an assistant on a food shoot, I don't touch the computer. My assistant is the only one that touches the computer and they don't touch the camera. I'm the only one that touches the camera. And I'm actually taking my camera back and forth from home. So we have other cameras here, but I'm taking my personal camera that I'm shooting with, you know, the whole time. So um, that's some of the stuff. Naturally, there are, you can't stay six feet away all the time, but we're wearing masks when we can. And, you know, the other thing is I'm trying not to touch the food. Now that gets a little tough when I'm doing my handhelds, which I do. And, and uh, where I, you know, we set up the shot, the client loves it, everything like that. And then I get to play with a handheld camera and push things around to see what I can make of it by myself. That's a little tougher. 
But um, what I try to do in situations like that is just throw on one disposable glove that I move the food with, shoot, and then do it that way. Try to be as, as careful as I can. You know, um, as, as my studio manager and my rep says, there, there's, a, there's a few people at Polera that we can't allow to get sick, and one of them is you, because we can't do business without you. I'm just gonna dive in. Um, just wanna make sure the audience understands that mask that you're putting on is protecting other people. It's not protecting you. Meaning if you cough or sneeze, you're protecting all those particles from blasting into someone else. So that six feet is really important, but that mask is really important too, to keep the other person safe. The other thing we're gonna re recommend in our sort of playbook for the studios, Wash your hands about every hour if you can, or use isopropyl alcohol about every hour if you can, just to be safe. Um, and then at the end of the shoot, try to clean the equipment. If you're using seamless, it gets tossed. Um, wipe down all your surfaces, and you know, 60% um, alcohol is perfect to kill this virus. Um, you don't need more than that. Um, hand sanitizer is great on set if you can't wash your hands, but washing your hands is actually the best. Um, so if you've got a kitchen, go wash your hands. Just want to say that. Excellent. Um, hold on, let me get a handle on my questions here. All right. Um, so Michael, Betsy tapped into this a little bit. Uh, Glenn Clark asks, what effect will handling shoots and clients remotely have on photographers' shooting fees? If anything, it raises it a little bit because you need a little more time to do stuff. You need a little more time in pre-pro, you know, because um, we are doing stuff that has to get done. I mean, clients are delaying everything else. You know, um, we're just doing those few shoots that have to be done for business to continue. You know? So I don't think it affects fees in a negative way. Um, uh, some clients have made jokes. Oh, no, I never have to come in the studio again. I love being in the studio. What do you mean? You know? Because a lot of them, when they come in, get more work done here than they ever get in their office. You know? I would say I, I agree with Michael, but I think shoots are going to be slower because there's going to be more safety protocols and there's fewer crew. Mm -hmm. um, so be patient and maybe that affects your price tag. Um, again, if there's fewer crew and you know, you've got to be cleaning all the time. Put that in there as a line item. You know, I did see a question here that I, I'd like to address, if you don't mind, Marianne. It's how do you give yourself some creative space before the art director chimes in and after the first shot? The beauty of this is you don't have to share every single shot with them and share your screen every single time, you know? Um, we tend to leave the share screen on but they could be looking at an old shot while the stylist and I are dinking with it and moving it around and stuff like that. And then we'll decide when to take that next shot for them to see. So in that sense, you're still controlling what your client sees and when they see it. It's only in the live video you don't have that control. And because live video has some contrast and some color issues and stuff like that, we use it more as a quick decision-making tool than a preview tool. Excellent, thanks, Michael. Um, there's a, there's, we have a couple questions from architectural photographers asking about if you have any methods, and I know you're not an architectural shooter, but any methods for um, keeping everybody safe on site and reducing liability. You know, we saw that question uh, much earlier. It was one of the first questions posted. And if I could get stretched to share a screen with our audience, um, I think there's some really interesting information to that. Um, this is a friend of mine here in Portland, Oregon, Lincoln Barber. He's also he's a former ASMP board member. And if you could scroll down for me, Stretch, he has an updated coronavirus policy. And he does a lot of architecture. And I draw your attention to some of the things that he does. Air travel is temporarily suspended, but all equipment is wiped down before prior to use. Hands are washed or sanitized. Shoes are taken off. Uh, at residential shoots, can't do that in industrial shoots, of course. Um, 
uh, no physical contact policy, 24 hours cancellation fees waived if illness occurs at the location. Uh, photographer only is allowed to perform photo shoots, so he's limiting himself without production support. And um, he does do remote art direction, right? Um, and you can, like we talked about, you could use Zoom or one of the wireless routers to do that, or even as someone mentioned, you could do capture and call the client on a cell phone. You could do a capture pilot and call them on a cell phone. So there are ways around it. Um, Lincoln was very generous, by the way. I asked him to let me share this information with everybody at the webinar, and he was more than happy to do that. Uh, I have one more additional thought to that, and that is um, disclosures and perhaps a liability release as it relates to your health. Um, especially when you're on location. I have a feeling people are going to start taking temperatures on set. Um, you're going to want to know, do they have a fever? Do they have an illness? Um, maybe somebody calls up the night before and talks to the crew. Um, and that sort of, oof, you know, if they show up on set and they've got a fever and they're sick, do you still pay them? I mean, there's a lot of questions, but I think, I think um, part of the procedures, part of this playbook, um, is going to have to include releases for the crew and and filling out a short health form because um, people are going to I I think the talent I mean I, I I get that Michael's a food photographer but you know the talent is going to request that and then you've got makeup artists you know and they have to be right here um, and obviously they're going to be wearing a face mask so I think there's going to need to be that aspect um, as well and I don't see that on um, your friend's website, but I think that needs to be included as part of the conversation and the thought process. I think that's, that's an interesting thought. I can tell you informally, of course, we always check the health of the crew before we shoot. And at one point, one of our food stylists, um, son or stepson had a little bit of a fever and we quarantined her from the studio for 14 days before she yep. Style you know, I, I, just to let this group know, um, Space for Arts, um, by the way, just I didn't get to intro myself. So think of us as the Airbnb for photo production studios. And um, on our website, we have beautiful production studios around the globe. So one of the things we're doing is working with an infectious disease doctor uh, and speaking um, about production, pre-production, post-production, keeping the safety on set and we're gonna be posting um, and drafting the, the first of what we call um, safety on set playbook. Um, and we will be having that on our blog soon. And it will, you know, I'm sure there's many people thinking about that, um, but we wanted to bring together a conversation for people to really um, focus on how production will look in the new normal. So look for that on our blog um, soon. So thanks for that, Betsy. Everybody, I just put a few links into the chat box. I put one to the uh, Lincoln Barber. I also put one to Polaris Studio where Michael Shea is. And I also put one in there for Space for the Arts so you can see um, the Betsy's page. I've got two, two more questions I'd like to ask before we sign off from our, our collections. We've been collecting um, questions from all over the place. Uh, Marianne, you put the links to all panelists, not to panelists and attendees. Oh, can you help me with that? Please. Uh, all right. So um, Ivan Martinez would like to know what's the biggest roadblock you've had to overcome and what was something you ran into that was completely unexpected? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Biggest roadblock we've had to overcome is um, clients being comfortable with the process. And the way we've overcome that is with demonstrations. And that's taken some time. And demonstrations, I don't charge for, you know, I don't charge for my time. The, um, the biggest problem, honestly, is glitches. I mean, even in this process, you know, I had Capture 12 up and running. It was working great. Then suddenly, it wouldn't connect. And I, I was saying, well, what did I step on a cable or something like that? And I replaced some cables and it still wouldn't connect, but Lightroom would connect. 
So then I went, I have both capture 12 and 20 on my computer. So I went to 20 and 20 connected. So little touches like that. Um, the tethering process is still a challenge sometimes on Macintosh. Uh, because it's particularly with the newer computers because the USB ports don't produce quite the same power as some of the older computers. So you actually can have better luck tethering on a four or five year old laptop than on a brand new laptop. And better luck tethering on a, on a, um, on a old MacBook Pro tower than on a new iMac. Um, there are ways around that, you know, but it's kind of a crapshoot, you know. Uh, the software, there was a time where, you know, we could only tether with single cords, you know, 15 foot. Now we're able to use uh, boosted cords that allow us tether to 30 foot. So those are the technical challenges you run into. Tethering is, is kind of a PIA. So, but it, it, it works. We use it all the time. You know? it's so just, one, one more question that's sort of similar. Um, Bob Baresh would like to know, what is the client attitude toward the changes that have to be made to the workflow? Has there been any pushback? No, surprisingly little. Uh, because these guys, they have to get this work done. Um, and they're almost grateful that we can figure out a safe way to get it done. Uh, once we can prove to them it can be done effectively, they, they, are, they are almost grateful. It's, it's, it's a good feeling. Yeah, I, and I said that earlier. Well said, Michael. P they need to get the work done, but they're not coming to Michael saying, here's how I want it to, here's all the procedures follow this it, it's getting the, the work is there and all of us are trying to creatively come together with the safe way forward um and and that's really what it's all about so that's why i was saying earlier this is a brave new world this is this is a world of opportunity i i mean it's devastating obviously it would be super great if we didn't have to go through this but I would not say by any stretch of the imagination should you think that this world is going away, that content is going away, that, that production is going away. Um, it's just that it's the new normal. And so all of us are thinking about that and all of us are trying to give back to the community and serve the community in a way where we can all move forward and do the best that we can. But clients are out there going, please help. Um, so use it as an opportunity. Thanks, Betsy. Um, we really appreciate that you're able to join us today. Guys, I'm sorry we didn't make it to every single question on the list here today. Um, there's a couple of things I think um, would be good to just remind everybody. You know, a lot of these regulations are changing from state to state. So before you approach any issue, um, make sure that you're familiar with what's happening in your local area. Um, there's been a couple questions about insurance and liability and contracts. You yeah. should absolutely consult your, consult your lawyer about your specific contract. Some of that gets very specific, um, and that's, that's the best place to get that information for those things. Um, Michael or Betsy, any final words before we sign off? I think I did my pitch there. <laughs> Just not, <laughs> not lose faith. Um, really, don't be scared. I mean, take all the information that's out there from the CDC guidelines to, to Michael's web, this webinar, to his friend who's an architectural photographer, to, you know, the playbook we're going to launch. Um, take all of that, put it in your toolbox and go pitch those clients and they are hungry for you to come up with those solutions. Um, and when you identify yourself as a knowledgeable person who has a handle on all the tech, because I feel I, in my gut, one, remote technology is a part of our new future. And, and two, um, I'm hearing in the background, and I know locations are out there and those are gonna continue, but the mantra in my head, product shoots are coming back first. They're the easiest, you know, they're the safest, and people are gonna start shooting in studios again. Larger studios obviously are gonna work a little bit better for you guys because that six foot social distancing thing needs to happen. And if you're in a 500 square foot space, um, open the windows, put a fan in the window, suck the ventilation out constantly and get the air circulating if you're shooting in a studio. Anyway, those are my 
That's my, uh, go out there and go crush it, everybody. Thanks, Betsy. Um, and Michael Shea, thank you so much for your time and taking us into your studio today. We really appreciate that. Um, for those of you that don't know, ASMP is um, one of the largest trade organizations in the country for, uh, well, oldest, sorry, oldest trade organizations in the country for professional photographers. Um, we've been offering a lot of our program for free, programming for free right now because we really feel that our purpose right now is to serve the entire industry. Um, we want to make sure everybody gets through this together because it keeps our industry strong on the other end. Um, I want to remind everybody that we have a town hall meeting on Friday at um, 3 p.m. Eastern time. I will let you translate that into your own time zone. Uh, you can find information about that on our website. We also have the um, ASMP COVID-19 Info Hub on our website at uh, www.asmp.org. Our legal counsel, Tom Madry, has been working tirelessly. I'm pretty sure he hasn't slept in a while um, to keep all of that stuff updated um, as quickly as he can. Um, things are moving fast, so we're doing the best we can. We hope you can keep you updated, and um, we hope that you found this useful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, ASMP, for allowing Space Farts to be part of this. Michael, thank you for um, putting, uh, tolerating me as your art director today. <laughs> it was a pleasure working with you, Betsy. And okay. I did, the only thing I missed was I didn't see the cat walking across your desk. Sorry, but I did, I'm drinking coffee and tea at the same time. How, can, I, can I at least get credit for that? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All Thank right, you all thanks everyone. Everybody, be safe out there. Be safe and be healthy. Take care, everybody.